Hey, greetings people from the Great Start Studio, where all my dreams are coming true, where I always like to ask the question, how good do you want to be? It's a question I ask myself every day and it draws me forward. Hey, I gotta bring another one of these drumstick illustrations. Every time I'm teaching, I, I have the sticks in my hand and I'm standing here and I'm explaining something. I go, oh, I gotta put that in a video. So much of the time, we are talking about and out in the world, out in the ether, in the interwebs, where people are always arguing over big kits and small kits and uh, it just goes on forever and the kids ask me about it how much do you how much gear do you need and these kinds of questions in this spectrum is the small kit and the the mega large kit of course that's always like terry bozio's kit or some kind of kit that just is an, it seems like an overkill for anybody that my favorite thing is when somebody sees a picture of terry's kit and uh, check it out if you can just go online check it out but the point of it is is that somebody will always say oh you could never that'd be too much to pack it'd be ridiculous at a gig uh, you know who would ever use who would ever need all that and i always just go uh, terry does terry uses it Terry uses all of it. That's all the validation that that kit needs is that somebody actually uses it. That argument for me just makes my eyes roll up in my head because every artist gets to be whoever they want to be to reveal their art. It could be one drum. It could be a non-drum, you know, playing on a counter. You know, it, it just blows my mind because everybody's comfortable wherever they're at. And then if something gets just a little farther than where they're at, this is one of the great lies, then that's too far. That's too far because I'm comfortable here that anything that's past that is too much. Everybody's ego says that they are the, the universal standard. What you wanna do is just to be a full spectrum person, I talk about this a lot. Okay, let me do it this way. Is uh, I've done gigs where I've only had three drums, a snare, a floor, cause I like a tom, and a, and a bass drum, and a hi-hat, and one cymbal. I've done a bunch of gigs like that. That just seemed to be the most responsible thing for the gig. It wasn't because I was too tired, I'm too old, or I'm too lazy, or what, or it's unnecessary. It just is because I felt that that was the best thing for the gig. That's all the sounds that the gig really required. Sometimes I've played shows where I'm like, why do they even have drums on this show? Like, uh, they didn't even need drums on this really. And so I kind of feel like maybe they, they hired somebody and they, but really they didn't even need a drummer, really. I'm trying to make these short. I've had kits that go all the way up to larger configurations like this. And this fulfills all the needs that I need. I sat around and went, how many Tom tones do I need to reveal how I feel on the drums? Four. I figured a high one up here on the eight, the 10, the 13, the 16. Those seem to follow pretty much everything that I would ever need. And then I just doubled it. So really this is just a six piece doubled. To 11 because of snares there's only one snare but the point of it is is that you get to choose an, as an artist anywhere you want so i tell the students the great thing about the drums is is that you get to play around with the instrument itself the actual foundational parts of the instrument where they're placed it is you the instrument becomes you and so to diss somebody else's instrument I just don't understand it at all. Now, I have seen people who, I had a guy who would come out to the show and he had this piece of paper that he had printed off of some horrible printer that had pictures of his drum room, he called it his drum room. And this guy was, he was older. He was probably, I don't know, in his late 60s. And so he wasn't really playing. He just had collected a bunch of gear in his, what he called a drum room. It was just a room full of drums, not even set up to play, just drum. He called it his drum set. And it was just a room full of just random drums, not even set up as a kit. <laughs> just, and I would go, I would go, really? Well, that's a lot of drums. Uh, do you ever play them? Oh, yeah, I play them all the time. And yet you, there, you look in the picture and there's like no way to even get in the room. It's just a bunch of drums in this room. It looks like a pawn shop gone mad. There are people who just are collecting drums and they, that's all they can think about. For real musicians who are actually playing, who are actually or in bands who are actually steering towards music and not just the symbolism. We've talked about this, the symbolism of music without the substance. You get to do anything you want. You literally get to do anything you want. Now, I prefer drumsticks. I really don't like playing with brushes or mallets or any other kind of, uh, you know, hot rods, plastics, and all those kinds of things. That's just me. Now, there are people who do that. I don't have to discredit them for their art, and that's what they do just because I don't like doing it. I, I don't like playing drums with my hands. There are plenty of drum set people who like playing percussion. That's not me. I don't have to say, well, you're not a real drummer. If, you know, these are just weaknesses of the mind to do this. I tell my students, do not do this. Just say, 
wow, that's uh, good for you. When I see somebody who has a big kid or a small kid and they're actually playing it, and I just go, wow, well, good for you. Everyone's in process. Sometimes people have a, a kit, they're trying it out for a season. It could be two or three years where they're trying out these pieces, and maybe they decide they want another piece on there. Maybe they decide they want three more symbols on the left side. They've never had symbols on the left side. Maybe they've just now learned to use their left hand, and now they, they're incorporating things on their left side. Maybe they just they want small sounds like timbali, uh, timbali, bright timbales or octobons or something, and they incorporate that. When Dave Weckl put uh, like bongos on the side that he was playing with a stick, I thought that was the coolest thing, uh, even though those are traditionally played with your hands. Everybody gets to do what they want to do. So to degrade somebody else is just, it's kind of a self-degradation to, to do that. It's almost like hurt people hurt people. As somebody who hasn't grown enough into maturity to see that everybody gets to be who they want to be, yeah, I can say, wow, well, good for you. you you're, this, is, this is your expression. It's not my expression, but I value it and I respect it. Have at it, right? It's not me. It's not me to do that. Uh, there are things that are not me. Playing breakneck blast beats all day is not my thing. It's somebody else's thing. And I look at it and I go, well, good for you. I say this to the screen like a ton all the time. I go, well, good for you, dude. And then I just move on and I just appreciate what I can appreciate. You know, I just go, wow, that's really something. They really worked on that. That takes some real physical prowess or whatever it is I can take from it. That's the good. And then I just go, okay, good for you. I set it aside. That's his life. That doesn't have anything to do with my life. And then I get back to my life. I wanted to be a full spectrum person so I can understand all the styles. You have different tools for those styles. Now, I've been hired by blues bands where I'm playing a four-piece kit but because it had a rack on it, and I showed up early, <laughs> this one, as the guy walks in, I'm standing right there with my Pepsi, he doesn't know me from anybody, he just hired me just blindly, but I'm already set up early, and he comes walking and he turns, he looks at the drum set, and he just says out loud in the lobby, man, that's not the blues, just blew my mind, and I was like, because of a piece of metal tubing that holds up a symbol? I mean, it's a four piece. <laughs> I just, I couldn't understand it. So you, you can't make everyone happy. That's a fact. Some people need something to be a very particular way. You do what you can to make all these people happy as you get hired. The ultimate thing is to make you happy. I don't want an instrument I am actually playing on that does not have the sounds that I need to express what I think the music needs to be expressed by me. It, it doesn't have anything to do with blues. It doesn't have anything to do with the sky. It doesn't have anything to do with, it has to do with me as an artist saying, I want my foot tambourine here, so if I'm going to, it, I think this is a gig where I could use it, if I can use it in there and make it musical, I, I'm going to bring it, because you are in charge of you. You know, these ideas are so kind of 30,000 foot view, and that's why I'm making all these things, so they'll be in the courses, so that I'm about to record uh, the entire series. Go get the series. My series is like 10 books in there, there's 13 all the other, 10, 10 workbooks. Get the series, it's a freeway. London's Great Start drum set, get on it, get on the freeway, start walking down. I'm gonna start making all the video courses here. I built a whole building to do this. <laughs> it's cheaper to build a building than it would be to try to record all this in the studio. So anyway, you wanna get that into you and start playing. You'll get these concepts into you in the, down in the weeds so you can really start learning what it is music requires. This is the 30,000 foot view, so you can at least get in the, in, the, in the right part of the neighborhood because otherwise you're off wandering around in the jungle and you have no idea what you're doing. And so you want to get a, a healthier aspect of what it is that we're doing here, that you could be anywhere on the spectrum for a kit. If it's authentic and that's where you think, I went through the nines where I took, I realized I was just playing fills way too much and I just decided to take the toms off. I just took the, all the toms off my kit for nine months. I was crashing all of the time, like always crashing, crashing. I was like, I need to practice not crashing. And so I went and I took, and I took the cymbals, the, the crash cymbals and the splashes off the kit for nine months. I did nine months where I was only practicing to pre-recorded music. I go, I'm, I'm studying out of the books too much. I need to really delve into pre-recorded music. So I was walking through it while I was being hired, but walking through all these different types of uh, styles. And then I was like, you know what? I need to really get submersive into just ideas that are foreign to me, that aren't so comfortable in the, in the course of a song. You go through phases with your instrument because we can. When I very first started doing this, I had a Tama kit and it was a regular kit where I had three toms up front and two floors and the double kick. And so what I did is I just decided to 
I got a remote hi-hat, and then I just uh, decided to put all the toms on the left side because I always was going off to the right. All my motions were leading to the right. Everybody goes through these things. We're not fixed in stone. One day you you might go, man, I just want to play a four-piece and a crash and a ride, and that's it. And you do that for a while, and then you go, you know, actually I kind of miss having the, the other thing, the other thing, the other thing that I had. And then you start building your kit, and it starts turning into this giant thing. And at a certain point you go, you know, I think... I think that's a little too much. I don't need all these crash symbols. I got six crash symbols. I only really need three. And you just make decisions. And so everybody is in flux. And so you want to just have the grace for everybody to go, we're all in process. And this is where they, they, they are doing their artistry. And this is where I'm doing my artistry. And they're not the same. It doesn't matter if somebody else is doing something on a big kit. You will survive. It doesn't matter if somebody's just playing with a snare and a hi-hat and they are doing gigs on that. And you're thinking, how ridiculous. He doesn't even have a tom on there. It, it doesn't matter. That's his gig. That's his life. So what I'm saying is that we want to get the full healthy view of this. So when you're in the weeds and you get in the series and you start walking it down and all those tracks and all those different subdivisions and all those different styles and all those different meters, that you have a way of placing it in a healthy way. That's what these drumstick illustrations are for. I'm trying to make these short. So, from the great... I just gotta wrap this up. From the great start... Woo! <laughs> so, from the great start studio, back at it.